long humanity. At the dawn of history, India started on her unending quest, and trackless centuries are filled with her striving and the grandeur of her successes and her failures. Through good and ill fortune alike, she has never lost sight of that quest or forgotten the ideals which gave her strength. We end today a period of ill fortune and India discovers herself again. The achievement we celebrate today is but a step, an opening of opportunity to the greater triumphs and achievements that await us. Are we brave enough and wise enough to grasp this opportunity and accept the challenge of the future? Freedom and power bring responsibility. That responsibility rests upon this assembly, a sovereign body representing the sovereign people of India. Before the birth of freedom, we have endured all the pains of labor and our hearts are heavy with the memory of this sorrow. Some of those pains continue even now. Continue even now. Nevertheless, the past is over and it is the future that beckons to us now. That future is not one of ease or resting, but of incessant striving, so that we might fulfill the pledges we have so often taken and the one we shall take today. The service of India means the service of the millions who suffer. It means the ending of poverty and ignorance and disease and inequality of opportunity. The ambition of the greatest man of our generation has been to wipe every tear from every eye. That may be beyond us, but so long as there are tears and suffering, so long our work will not be over. And so we have to labor and to work and work hard to give, to give reality to our dreams. Those dreams are for India, but they are also for the world, for all the nations and peoples are too closely knit together today for any one of them to imagine that it can live apart. Peace has been said to be indivisible, so is to the people of India, whose representatives we are, we make appeal to join us with faith and confidence in this great adventure. This is no time for pity and destructive criticism, no time for ill will or blaming others. We have to build the noble mansion of free India where all her children may dwell. I beg to move, sir, that it be resolved that after the last stroke of midnight, all members of the Constituent Assembly present on this occasion do take the following pledge. At this solemn moment, when the people of India, through suffering and sacrifice, have secured freedom, I, a member of the Constituent Assembly of India, do dedicate myself in all humility to the service of India and her people, to the end that this ancient land attain her rightful place in the world and make her full and willing contribution to the promotion of world peace and the welfare of mankind. Members who are not present on this occasion do take the pledge with such verbal changes as the President may prescribe at the time they, attend, they next attend the session of the Assembly. I beg to move, sir.